Hi everyone, this is Ms. Schneider, Chief Strategist of MarketGage.com. It's January 24th and we're just ahead of GDP, PCE, obviously a lot of big earnings. Netflix was the big news. By the time you get this, Tesla will have reported. And so here we are with new all-time highs in Qs and Spies, but we still have those inside sectors that I like to watch, retail, small caps, transportation, not quite keeping up. So that's always in my mind. This is a good day to look at commodities as well because as people have started starting to think inflation is over, mission accomplished, we're watching three things that have really been indicators that maybe not so fast. One would be how silver is doing to gold, and we're going to look at silver real quick. One is the sugar futures that has really gone up about 20% since it's low at 20 cents. And the other is dollar, which is still range bound. We're going to look at the USD against the Japanese yen. But no, if we break down under 102 strictly in the dollar, and all three things start to happen that I just mentioned, we could be looking at a lot of fun in commodities. So let's start here with the um, silver futures. So what I'm liking about the silver futures is that we are we had a mean reversion, we came all the way back off, but we held this major support at 22 cents. Excuse me, 22 dollars. That's sugar. 22 dollars, and. Even though we haven't quite had a, a dramatic reversal here, I do like the fact that we're holding up against yesterday's high, which is at uh, 2258, and currently this is closing today at around 2278, 2279. So that's a that's not bad. At least we're going in the right direction, and more importantly, this is up. And if we take a look at gold. This actually is closing down, and we're still very much in the range that we've been. But the momentum, even though we were talking about the bearish divergence last time I was on with you all, how we had the mean reversion sell signal, the 200 is above the 50, here the 50 is above the 200, the price is below both moving averages. Based on this Bollinger Band, we are getting a slight improvement in momentum. And really, the best we can say about this right now is it's that it's range bound. And so that 2,000 an ounce continues to be key. Remember, we're still saying possibility gets down to around 1980 and maybe, maybe 1940, but that would be, I think, the buy of the century. And on the flip side, if we can, I, see, I think the numbers are pretty much the same. We're looking at 2000, we're looking at 2020, then we're looking at 2040, and then once we get through 2050, which really would be up more like around here, you can see how nice that dissects the stuff to the left versus the stuff to the right. We can really say 2050, 2055. We get through there, this all starts to look like another bottom and up we go. And I think that's about the most I can say about gold that we haven't already said at this point. Moving over to crude oil, that $75 a barrel has been somewhat pivotal, also extremely range bound like we just saw with the metals. And that's really the nature of it. So it's hard to say, oh, this is great. It's it's bottoming and off we go to the races to the upside or this is ranging and now we're going to break down and go much lower. I mean, obviously, you know that I'm thinking more upside than downside, but nonetheless, you can see how how much $75 has been pivotal here, up and down, going here when we broke below it and then got back through it. Now here we broke below it again and now we're back through it. But we still have more really to do here. And before we get back to price, you can also see that we did have the mean reversion down here. So those work out real well. We're back above that 50-day moving average in the um, real motion indicator. But also notice here that we're not quite above the Bollinger Band or above the zero. So we have a lot of room in momentum, just like we have a lot of room in price. And you got That'll be looking at a few things. One, of course, would be the 73.65 level. That's where your 50-day moving average is. And if we just use the good old cursor here to look at bodies of candles and areas of support, today's low, interestingly enough, has some historical data here. So 73.94 to me would be probably a good place to hold. Then, of course, we'd be looking at that area right here at 73.65. And if it does hold and we open up again using sort of what's been a lot of congestion in price. You could see the high here and then the high here and then the top of the candle here. That means really basically at 74, 65, that's going to be your more immediate area of point to hold. And of course, if we can get through 
that's 75. Then the next thing we're going to be looking at here is this area right here. The high on this day was 75.37. So we've got more work to do. Even though today's high was 75.83, above 74, as I said before, above this level right here, I think you have to have a bias of a b bullish, 74.63, above obviously 75, even better. And then, of course, if we can actually sustain a move based on this day right here, here, where the close was at 75.57. So let's call it 75.50 to 75.60, even 75.37, as we mentioned before. That whole area between 75.30 and 75.67 or 70, this is really what we have to get through. And then we're talking about not only this looking very bottoming, but then we're starting to look at some of the upper regions of resistance near that 200-day moving average at 77.70. So moving ahead to the SPY, I mean, as we can see that we've had some really nice moves for a few days now, starting with this and then the gap up and then another gap up and then another gap up, a little bit of digestion here ahead of the Netflix earnings and then another gap up. So the question is, is it getting tired? And of course, that's why I like to look at small caps and retail. But just from the momentum indicators right now, you have to look at something, and this is probably the most important thing I'm going to tell you right now, which is is when the momentum was up here, look where the price was. The price was at 47.68. The momentum now is not nearly as high as the momentum then, only now the high is 4,900. So that tells me that the momentum on this last leg up is starting to get tired. And of course, if we break down under this Bollinger Band, then we can start talking mean reversion. In terms of price, there was a really nice level of support that happened right here at 4,800. So that's going to be your immediate place to look at. But more near term, you have to check out today's low, which is at 4869. We break down under 4869. Then I think we'll be testing probably near the highs of this day, which would be 4842. We break down under 4842, then obviously 4800 will be back on tap. Now on the flip side, after two inside days, you got to look at the high of this day, which is 48.68. And remember, that's with a low today of 48.69. Not much of a gap, but a little teeny gap. So that 48.68 becomes extremely pivotal. Below, I would start to think correction time. If we hold, great. And there are some people who think that if we can get through 4,900, we're on our way to 5,500. So that too remains to be seen. And moving on to natural gas, by the way, there was a reverse split in UNG ETF, if you are watching that. But not, again, not much to say here. Uh, so that's why I want to continue to show these charts to you, because at least we get some idea of momentum. So let's look at price. I mean, clearly we can see that 225 held. But here we are now right into the resistance at the 200 and the 50. So let's say we get through the low of this day right here, which is at 275. Yeah, that starts to look better. We can get back over three better still. And if we can't get through 275, and even let's go tighter than that, today's high, which is at 268. Over 268, we'll test 275. Over that looks better. But if we can't even get there under 268, I think we can continue to chop around for a while. Uh, and I'm saying that because we've got these two days here with a little bit of a gap of major support, which makes today's low of 250, 249, kind of a swing area as well. On the momentum indicator, We've got, obviously, we had the mean reversion on this day. Look how nice that works. We popped up and then down just as we made a high here. Now we're below the Bollinger Band, back above it again today. But again, in this case, more of a bullish divergent because the 50 is above the 200. Yes, we have that here. But the momentum is above the 200 where the price is not. So this is saying most likely, if we're just looking at momentum, this has been obviously volatile. But with all of the pressures going on and more and more news about stockpiling and supply chain and Red Sea, we have to say, watch that area. Again, about 268, then 275, we get through there. Then this momentum is telling us that we may have another leap up on the upside, maybe, like I said, up to around 3, possibly 320. 
And finally, that brings us to the dollar Japanese yen. As I mentioned before, the dollar had some weakness today. So this is the dollar, obviously, is the lead currency in here. So let's start with price. We did, uh, when I spoke to you last, we had that nice move up above the 50, but we've just been consolidating here. And even though this isn't any kind of significant reversal candle, it is at least showing that this whole area, so let's 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 just take a look at this area right here, where the um, close was around 148.08 and the open was at 148.24. So figure somewhere between 148.08 and 148.24. That means we can get through there. The dollar will get stronger again and most likely continue to go up, maybe closer to around 150. That's possible. However, if that can happen and we are underneath that 148.08 level, then of course we'd be looking at where this is closing right now today at uh, 147.59. So one under 148.08, 147.59. And then of course we start looking here at that 50-day moving average, which comes in right at around 145.70 or so. So yeah, you know, tight. these tight ranges are good because you can trade the range breakouts or the range breakdowns but if you look at the overall picture you can see oil is kind of paused but maybe momentum shifting gas definitely paused but momentum better gold still trying to figure out silver starting to look a little bit better than gold and then if we just check out the momentum here on this you can see the momentum has come off but we have a bearish divergence here with the dollar yen because it's underneath the 200 barely holding on to the 50. The 200 is above the 50, where the 50 is above the 200. That's a bullish. This is actually more of a caution. So to me, you put that all together, if oil continues to go up, if silver catches a bid, especially in its performance against uh, gold, and then on top of that, we start to see the yen going up against the dollar or just the dollar in and of itself falling against other currencies, then that could be telling you something, regardless of what the PCRE numbers are, and remember they're lagging, that we could be in as we get into end of January, February, even March, another second wave of inflation. Okay, that's it for now. You all have a great afternoon. Talk to you soon. Bye for now.